Dr. Dr. Choquette, you have six minutes, sir, for your closing statement. <sighs> Shall I say you missed me again? <laughs> Dr. Brown still misses the point. I am prepared to accept every single passage in the Old Testament to be messianic, even those that he didn't mention, even those that nobody mentions. And I'll still say, even if they are, so what? What has that got to do with Jesus? You want to find similarities? Well, let me tell you. I am prepared to stand here in front of you tonight and tell you that every single passage that is referred to by Christians to refer to Jesus applies to me no less. That I have as many claims to be the Messiah as Jesus has any time. Plus more, that I have a paternal link to King David which he doesn't have. Uh, secondly, uh, to say that modern orthodox do not believe in an unbroken chain of tradition, that is sheer nonsense. A ludicrous lie. To say that there are Jews who have accepted Jesus, and he quotes even rabbis, do you want me to quote how many priests and ministers and nuns and friars and who knows what else have dropped Christianity and became Jews or became Muslims or became Buddhists, etc., etc.? So what does that prove that a person has a certain weakness or a person allowed himself to be persuaded by emotional arguments, etc., etc.? What kind of an argument is that? The onus of proof is still upon them and so far they haven't proven a thing. Um, read carefully, he says. Yes, read carefully by all means. I once dealt with a young man who got involved with Campus Crusade for Christ, became the main recruiter on the campus in San Diego. I spent a few hours with him, and at the end of it, I told him one thing. Look, I'm not asking you to listen to my interpretations and what I say. I ask you one thing and one thing only. Go home tomorrow. Stay away from them, stay away from me, and stay away from the rabbis. Start reading the Old Testament, starting with Genesis 1.1. Don't look at Jewish interpretations, don't, don't look at theirs. And then keep reading straight forward. And as you come to various passages, ask yourself, what does this mean? It took him two days to drop the whole thing. Two days. Now back to my closing statement. I think I've clearly given you the reasons why historical Judaism rejects categorically any suggestion that the Christian savior is or might be the Messiah. Or at least the Jewish Messiah. And B, why it is impossible for to be a faithful Jew when accepting the New Testament or the Christian Savior. Christianity feels an obvious kinship to Judaism, but not vice versa. The Christian faith and scriptures mean absolutely nothing to the Jew, just as Islam or Hinduism mean nothing to the Jew or the Christian. We have no quarrel with the Christians, Muslims or Hindus. We respect other people's religions and are opposed to seeking their conversion to bring them into our ranks. If necessary, though, we shall respond firmly to any attacks on our beliefs, and especially the vicious and evil obsession to missionize Jews, to the egotistical, sanctimonious self-righteousness of exclusivists who proclaim their religion to be the one and only truth for all mankind. Yes, there is absolute truth, but it's not yours, it's not mine, it's God's. And let no man come unto God except but their way. As Coleridge said, he who begins by loving, he was a Christian, he who begins by loving Christianity better than truth will proceed by loving his own sect or church better than Christianity and end in loving himself better than all. I couldn't have said it better. Our real concern is his missionary attempts to proselytize Jews. Mostly easy prey, totally ignorant of their own identity, young children, bedridden in hospitals, and at least one person here in this audience knows who and what I'm talking about, defenseless elderly in nursing homes, schmatt, the conversion of a Jew to another faith is to us worse than physical death. It is the brutal murder of a Jew's soul, cutting off his connection with God and salvation. Christians and devout believers of any religion should understand that, for they feel the same way about their own identity, their own children, brothers and sisters. They, no less than we, regard the leading astray of their children into alien curts or religions as the worst tragedy. So do not do unto others what you would not want others to do unto you. Leave Jews alone. The last 2,000 years of history of go out into the hedges and compel them to enter and to the Jew first is the very root and branch of anti-Semitism which has brought us 2,000 years of relentless persecutions, suffering and bloodshed from Rome through the Crusades, the Inquisition, the continuous pogroms. This mission to the Jews under all its guises, whether going by the name of the various churches, Hebrew Christians, Jews for Jesus, Messianic Jews or what have you, is the very heart and soul of Nazism 
which in our days resulted in the Holocaust of six million Jews. It is the fruit of a very, very bad tree, for a good tree brings forth good fruits, and only a bad tree brings forth bad fruits. In the words of Micah, for all the peoples, each man walks in the ways of his God, and as for us, we shall walk in the name of God, our God, forever and ever. I doubt very much whether anyone has been swayed by tonight's presentations or by any other debate of this kind. Most believing Christians are committed to their dogmas of faith, and no arguments regardless of sound or logical will persuade them otherwise. Torah Judaism, the historical Jewish tradition, is based on the absolute evidence of God's public appearance at Sinai, revealing himself to over two million Jews and verifying to them the unquestionable authenticity of Moses, historical proof passed on in documentary and oral tradition for over three and a half thousand years. Thus, it is logically impossible that a knowledgeable Jew can ever forgo that unbroken chain of tradition and historical record for the personal allegations and belief of anything or anyone who would want to change one jot or one tittle of that tradition by adding or subtracting anything. Thus, enough with all this nonsense. Let Jews be faithful Jews, even as Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, or Hindus should be allowed to believe what they wish. I had some more, but time is up. That concludes the formal debate section. We did, however, promise to you that at some point you would have an opportunity of expressing your thanks to the gentlemen for their preparation and their work, and I think this would be an appropriate time to do so.